it is marked that today we talk about the iPhone 10. Yes, iPhone X. Uh, the iPhone uh, 10. Uh, <laughs> do people really care about our review about the iPhone 10? I don't know. I care. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I wanted to get back to productivity topics. Hello, I'm Radek. I'm Michael. And this is the podcast. A sounding board for interesting ideas and insights. We discuss books read I want to share with you. As well as technology and productivity, which is what we do by day working on our app, Nosby. Or whatever else comes to mind. And apparently Radek's mind today. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the initial plan was to record this episode after the new year, but you decided to buy a um, an Overcast ad for the podcast. Yes, I decided to try that out. Uh, uh, we are big fans of Overcast app, and uh, there is this model of uh, of to be able to purchase an ad for a podcast. And um, because we have so many sponsors, uh, like just Nosby, a <laughs> place where we, <laughs> where we work. Um, so we don't have any really sponsors. We are not going to talk about mattresses or, you know, eyeglasses or <laughs> anything like that. Ouch. Ouch. <laughs> uh, uh, all we're going to talk about is, is about productivity, uh, today especially. Um, but anyway, I wanted to try it out. I wanted to support Marco's uh, Overcast effort anyway. And uh, yeah, and see how this performs. Uh, up until now, we have had like 10,000 views of our ad and a few subscriptions, like 40-something or whatever. So it's going pretty well. Cool. Uh, I mean, considering we uh, we uh, make absolutely no money on this podcast, it, it seems like a, a great investment, but <laughs> no, but it's an interesting experiment and, and we'll see. Um, and anyway, uh, today I wanted to get back to productivity topics and the one of the the defining sort of themes of the podcast um especially that we now have an ad so we should talk about like the podcast core topics which is um once again monkey brain optimizations so uh we talked a few months ago a lot about uh managing distractions um you know managing sort of uh compulsive behavior at work and how to configure our, our devices and et cetera to sort of not succumb to the uh, instant gratification of, you know, just checking on Twitter and just doing this and that and suddenly all your productivity, all your focus is destroyed. Um, since we are just mortal humans, uh, we need uh, brain hacks sometimes to sort of make a structure, make a system in which we don't accidentally... Um, hurt ourselves and our productivity by just following our, our instincts, which are, are usually, which are very often not what actually uh, makes us happier in the long term. Okay. So uh, a, a quick recap uh, for those who didn't listen to, to, to that series of, of episodes. Uh, one thing I, I but did... But we'll link of, to them in the show notes, so make yeah, sure they definitely. check them out. Uh, is, um, I removed a lot of um, notifications from my devices, so I, I, you know, I, I became very selective about what apps I allow to um, put a, a red badge on the home screen, which applications I allow to send me notifications, because I just noticed about myself that I sort of conditioned myself to react to them. Like it's instant gratification. Like there's something new, there's something that's happening in the world, and you want to check it out, right? Uh, and so um, because because I have such a you know strong natural reaction to it, I said it. Okay, it's a good idea to just make less of it, right? Like uh, fewer applications should send me notifications because most of it is not really important anyway. But one application which um, which would uh, which often uh, distracts me at work is obviously Slack, right? Oh yeah, because. Mm -hmm. You know, it's work things happening. So if there's something new, if if there's a badge, then it's probably important, right? And um, uh, I already cut down on on Slack such that I only would get notifications on my phone and on my Mac. I wouldn't use Slack at all, and my iPad, I wouldn't have notifications, but have a badge on the app icon. Uh, and uh, you know, that to me was a as a um, 
seemed like a reasonable trade-off. But but then I I thought, okay, um, what if I go further, <laughs> right? Uh-huh. Uh, like it's it's better to go too far and then decide, okay, it's too much and and cut back than to never explore how far you can go. So I decided. I'll just kill all of the notifications and badges of Slack. So for the last couple of months, I, w- I get zero push notifications from Slack, and I don't even allow the app icon to get a badge. And amazingly, <laughs> nothing wrong happened. <laughs> Not once. Like, you know, again, people still have ways to reach me if I need to. I would still check on the app, you know, multiple times a day, but when I have a moment to to check it, and like I wouldn't even allow myself that when I'm switching between apps on my iPad, I just see this this red badge, and and there's this like gnawing feeling that maybe I should check it out, maybe it's something important, and you know inevitably it's almost always not. I mean, this is like uh, what what you just did. I can, uh, <laughs> well, it's brave. Uh, well, the thing is. <laughs> Like on one hand, on the other hand, it's not. I mean, this is how we always say you should treat mail. Like there should be no badge in your mail because, like, it's it's nonsense. Because uh, of course, every day new mail is coming. I mean, you don't have to be anyone special to receive lots of email every day. I mean, for spammers, nobody is special. <laughs> Everybody gets lots of email. <laughs> so, uh, so the the uh, notification for email is really pointless. Um, and the idea. I mean, the productivity idea of email should be that you go to email when when you want to process email. So there is exactly. this, there is this um, important difference between the word process and the word check. You mm-hmm. don't check email. I mean, yeah. this is really like this. That's, just, a, that's a good point. Just hold that thought. You don't check email. You process email. So there is no checking email because you are supposed to process email. Go to the email, re- read it and react to it or not depending on your decision. And that's it. Read it once and forget it. Unless this email is a love letter and you're just, you know, you like reading it again and again and again. <laughs> so that's, 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 the, that's the basic pro- productivity principle. But now what you, what you did with Slack, you took it to a different level because Slack is a chat program. So yeah. in a chat program, um, the expectation... Although, you know, for some people in the email, also the expectation is to reply right away. But, yeah, 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 exactly. But that's their problem. Um, uh, but within Slack, because it's a chat program, like everyone kind of agreed that direct uh, uh, reply and quick reply is the norm. Like it's like mm-hmm. kind of like unwritten rule. Because it's a chat program, you should be responding right away because we chat, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh- I'm I'm sort of uh, in a way breaking expectations, but you know th- this is this is like the, the core of, of this principle, this idea that um, why why don't you try going too far, right? Because like it, it would be blindingly obvious if if I went like actually went too far and like people are are angry with me every other day because I'm not replying quickly enough, and so you know it it seemed ridiculous, it seemed like too much because you're supposed to answer quickly. But like the amazing thing is that it's fine. It's actually fine. And uh, some people, um, like some people who are also here talking to you, have this hack of just <laughs> sending you iMessage. So I just by- bypass Slack completely. So I know that you will get my message anyway. But then again, yeah, I don't disturb exactly. you that many, that many times anyway. Yeah, uh, exactly. Like there are still ways to, to reach me if something is really important. It's just the, the thing is that it, it doesn't actually happen. Right, and I don't, you know, because Slack is is by definition much more synchronous. I don't process Slack. I check on Slack, but I do it on on my schedule, right? So I don't I don't have the temptation of looking at at it just because there's a red badge. Um, so I can create for myself this space for deep work for the first half of the day where I would not check at Slack at all or just once. And then at the, in, you know, you know, in, in the other, um, the, the second part of the day where I'm sort of done with my most important deep work for the day, I will allow more Slack. I will check on it uh, more often. I, I will usually have things to write to other people and expect replies, right? So it, 
it's fine. But just like th th that was like another step I, I did, which is I killed the notifications completely and it turned out it's fine. So that's all good. But um, a, a problem remains. <laughs> so um, I, I did this as another step, um, another uh, thing I, I, I did uh, after, you know, I just noticed how compulsively uh, I, I would often tend to react to badges and notifications. But it, it doesn't change the fundamental problem is that I am conditioned to to want to react to them in the first place. Now that's much harder to, to change. Like those are designed to push the right psychological buttons for you to react. Like that's the whole point of notifications and badges is for you to react to them, right? Um, and it's just, it's hard sometimes, especially if I'm not already in this, in this right productive deep work flow uh, to notice it and not react. So I was thinking of, of ideas how I can not just reduce my exposure to, to, to the things I react compulsively to, but how can I, you know, what can I do to, to, uh, to reduce this, this conditioning in the first place so that I am, you know, I, I can notice uh, that there's new things to react to and yet not react. So uh, I came up with, a, with an idea and, and I, I did it for the last two or three months and I call it the inbox non-zero. Super handy. Okay, so <laughs> what does that mean? All right, uh, so so first, uh, first you should explain uh, the context of what the idea of inbox zero in the context of um, email uh, originally was. Okay, so the inbox zero is this idea that when you get emails coming to your inbox, you should zero them out at the end of the, each day. So at the end of each day, you should just process each email message, decide what to do with it, reply if necessary, create filter if necessary, remove if necessary, unsubscribe if necessary, just, you know, make a decision about each and every incoming email. And then it's at zero. And then another day, now that it comes, another flood of email messages come, and you go over and over again to create uh, to to get to inbox zero. And of course, in the process uh, of going to inbox zero, you should be smart about it. You should be creating, you know, filters, rules, um, unsubscribing, you know, doing everything that you can so that you don't get as many emails as you do uh, normally. And, and this is the, the concept of inbox zero. There is the, 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 another concept, which is inbox infinity, which means that <laughs> you don't uh, process like, each and every email. You just, you know, check your email inbox and selectively check a message and then leave all the other messages be. Uh, so, yeah, these are the concepts of, of email managing. Email yeah, management. And, and in that context, it makes a lot of sense because if you, you know, if you buy into this philosophy of email that you don't check on it, but you process it, then it, it makes perfect sense because at the end of each day, you have a clean slate and you know that you haven't left anything unchecked. Because if you do, then you have these temptations to get back to it and get back to it and you stop processing it, right? You, you, you start yeah, checking on it again. And most importantly, you, you you keep thinking about messages that you shouldn't be thinking about. I exactly. mean, I, I mean, because this, I mean, this was this has always been my pain. Like, you, I, I just read the message, but I said, you know, I'm going to deal with it later. And then your exactly. mind plays tricks on you, and you get back mm -hmm. to the message. You get back to the message, and you get back again, and you're like, damn, I should have written the reply and be done with it. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and the thing is that once you learn this con concept in um, in the context of, of email, it's very tempting. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a very nice uh, concept that you always have a clean slate, that, that you always zero it out, right? And it's very tempting to, to apply it to other media like um, Slack, uh, you know, new mes messages on Slack or, or new, uh, new comments in, in Nosby. Except that, um, especially with Slack, unlike email, Slack is it's not something that most people would process once a day, but something you would check multiple times a day. Like, that's the whole idea, right? Yeah. 
but then the, the the problem is that if if you're tempted to to um, you know zero out all of the new messages and all of, all of the new notifications in Slack every time you look at it, you know, trying to achieve this sort of Slack inbox zero. Uh, the problem is that the 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 inbox zero state in this context is the most fragile state you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. it just takes you know seconds or minutes to undo it because you've checked everything but then in the moment there's a new message and there's still things to check and Mm -hmm. so every time you check on slack you know you're tempted to 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 check some or, or all of it and then every time you have to check everything if you try to do it at all because like the, the the zero state never lasts so if you have the urge the temptation to have an inbox zero of sorts in the context of slack or not being uh, new comments but especially slack since it's it's much more synchronous then you always feel the need to react and i i noticed that instead of of um instead of focusing on the on the, ex- the the exposure that there's things to react to, um, I should also focus on my sort of psychological need to feel like I have to have an empty plate in the first place, right? Like less things on the plate is good, but it doesn't have to be ever empty, ever in book zero. But what I mean by that is there's a there's a large psychological difference between like zero new things like no badge and some new things right whether like if 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 there's nothing it's clean slate if there's a new message like oh there's a need to react but there's a ver- there's a little sort of psychological difference between whether you have uh one new item to f- to check out or 10 items or 100 items like you're in the state that the inbox is not zero. Yeah. Like that, that's it. Mm -hmm. And so, um, a a sort of new, new policy for myself that I, that I adopted is that, uh, in Slack and in must be new comments, I always keep, uh, some stuff unread. So even if I want to check a few times a day, just to see if there's, there's, there isn't something that requires my attention. Um, I will look at it very selectively and I will like specifically pick uh, like the tasks that I see, oh, that might be relevant to me. And if it is, like you say with email, I reply instantly because I don't want to be sort of bothered with the thoughts of that task uh, mm-hmm. if, if I don't reply at all, like, uh, you know, immediately. Or if there's a if there's a direct message, uh, you know, a direct message on Slack, I will also deal with it immediately. But I don't, I don't zero out the the view, the the inbox, the new comments, or all of the unread messages. And it, it, it's a it's a it's a small difference. Like it shouldn't matter, but it sort of does because I I don't have this this reaction that there's something to check out. So let me just, you know, check it off like, okay, there's something new, blah, blah, blah. Because, you know, there's a lot of new information to process and it's sort of um, exhausting in a way. Like, because I always know that there's new, that there's things I haven't read. Because I always see that that uh, I don't have a clean slate. There's, it, it's always, like, there's always something on the plate that I haven't still checked out. I don't have as strong of an urge to react to it, um, even if I do check check Slack or check Nosby new comments multiple times a day. Hmm. So um, let me get this straight. So, for example, I'm, I'll tell you how I'm doing it, and tell me if this is something similar of, of what you have in mind. So, for mm-hmm. example, I, I have what I have is in in, in Slack. I'm a, I'm a member of several channels, right? Mm-hmm. And then I'm also uh, like communicating with several people directly using Slack. And unlike you, I have uh, push notifications set so that uh, direct messages, I get them pushed to me. 
Um, this way I, I, I can be in touch with the whole company and not everyone uses um, iPhones and uh, iMessages. Anyway, um, so what I have, I have these few, peop few, few people I work with uh, more and these channels I, um, I'm most interested uh, as starred, you know, people and channels. Mm -hmm. And then I have the rest. And what I do is I... Uh, I take care of the one of the start things. So, for example, at the end of the day, I'm going to check the firm channel, which is start, just to, to check, you know, what's happening in the general firm channel. And um, mm -hmm. then I check. Uh, I also check the, the the closed channels that we have, the the ones that we have, like for example, for the podcast, or for our marketing team, or for my my direct, direct reports, or for our design fight. So I have these channels. And these ones, I really zero out because I want to take like, every time I check Slack. But then mm -hmm. there are the rest of the channels, like, you know, general design channel, you know, dev channel, there's development channels, uh, you know, I know be marketing channels, like the general channels. And there, uh, they're usually not zeroed. They are just there. And if I feel like, you know, checking out marketing stuff, I'll just, I'm just going to go to marketing channel, check out, check it out, you know, read maybe some past comments and maybe catch up with what was happening or for example the random channel or or some some of them um but only if i make a conscious decision to check out this channel for some reason right mm -hmm. but but i don't like i have them there uh, and i and, and they're indicated that they're not you know completely red and i'm fine with that i don't feel the urge to to zero them out because these are not channels that concern me like at this point Right, and but but I still want to be member of these channels because they do concern me at all. Like it's mm -hmm. not like they, they I don't care about these channels. I do care about them, but when I care, so when I really want to check them, um. So this way I have this this division, this clear division of, of only a few selected channels that that I I zero out because I want to be on top of these because they are really important and and there are not so many messages coming in there anyway, um. And then the general channels, I just you know visit them when I when I feel like or when I need to. Okay, so I haven't uh, I guess I should I should manage the the start channels and DMs and, and whatnot a bit better in Slack. Um, but it is sort of similar. So um, for example, if I have a direct message, then if I go to Slack, I will check it out, right? Like obviously. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I decide not to deal with it right now because you know it will require me to do something else. I just like Acknowledge it. I, I see that it's not urgent. I mark it as unread, or add you know myself a task to Nosby to deal with it later, and and forget it, for, forget about it. Get back to it later. And when I'm checking Slack, I will check the the channels that might be relevant to me right now. So, mm -hmm. for example, if it's Tuesday and we record the podcast on Tuesdays, then I will check out the podcast channel. If it's not Tuesday and I know we're not recording, you know, it's nothing, uh, so it's nothing urgent, then I won't ch uh, check out that channel. I will check it out later, maybe at the end of the day, but but not when I'm, you know, checking it, uh, you know, in a short break between my, my deep work. Um, or we have the uh, dev general, general channel with, um, you know, development stuff and I will check it out if it's, you know, close to 10 a.m. in the morning because, or, you know, uh, when it is like just two minutes before 10 a.m. In, in the morning because we have the 10 a.m. Uh, short meeting. And I will check it out because there's messages relevant to that. So maybe it's like, oh, I won't be there or blah, blah, blah. Or maybe, oh, we can't uh, use the normal channel because something, something, right? So I will only check the things that might be that might be relevant to me right now, but like actually might be relevant and not in theory could be, but probably not. So mm -hmm. I will, I will, you know, making it, make it a point to never check out all of them, right? So even at, at the end at the end of the day, I will leave some unread. Oh yeah, and and mm -hmm. the point point is that you know I I will deal with them eventually, like maybe. At the end of one day, I will check out what's up at random, and you know, some other time I'll check out what's at uh, the firm. Uh, but I, I want, I will never zero it out. Yeah. So, uh, so for me, as as I said, these start channels, I usually at the end of the day. I mean, if not during the day, then at the end of the day, I zero them out. I want to make sure that nothing really important just skips my 
attention. Uh, so so that's the, the that's that's for me the, the the barrier. But yes, I leave many channels unread for days straight and for you know for for you know weeks straight even sometimes. Um, uh, and uh, and f for me the cool thing is also that uh, even though I'm not checking these channels, stuff is happening there, and um, this kind of becomes my um, let's call it a, a knowledge base as well. So, for example, uh, just the other day there was a, there was a, an event in Calendar which I didn't understand at all. It was um, uh, you were planning a next next you know next iteration of of our software and you called it with a weird name. And because of that, when I saw the event in Calendar, I was like, "What is this?" Like I really didn't know what it was, and I was like, "I'm confused." I mean, did somebody you know hack into our calendar and just put some random thing there, or what what what, what did just happen? But apparently, you know, the developers decided to just name something in this totally ridiculous way and just put it there in the calendar. So the good thing was I just went to Slack, hit search and put the name in the, in the search box. And I was like, oh, okay, now I get it. And then I had, I had the relevant, relevant conversation. I understood what, what, it's all, what it was all about and that's it. Then, you know, I didn't zero out any channel or whatever. It was just, you know, I just had a knowledge base there. Just, um, I understood what was happening <laughs> in my company <laughs> because this I didn't understand. Just for context, uh, we did this thing where we split our work into six week cycles and we give them names and we, we followed this thing which we saw somewhere in the software world where you give it a, a, a two word name with a noun and an adjective um, that describes it and they start with the same letter. So it's like M and M or K and K and so uh, this current cycle is is called, um, it, it's not the same letters in English, but in Polish it is. And it's something like short-haired kiwi. Don't ask. Yeah, yeah that's why I, I saw a short-haired kiwi in the calendar and I was like, what is this? But then I got the context from Slack. So it was helpful. Um, so yeah, but for example, for the comments in Nosby, now I try to, mm -hmm. and I have them on my checklist, like at the end of each day, when, when I have this, um, what I stole from you, the idea to have the, the you know, the closing mm -hmm. checklist for the day. Um, then one of the closing checklist points is to, uh, to go through all uh, new comments in Nosby. So then I do go through all new comments. I don't read all new comments. So for example, if there are co comments in the project that I'm not really currently, you know, working on, it's not relevant for me. I just, um, uh, I don't read them. And, but if there is, for example, a big common thread in a task, which is relevant to me, but I won't be able to work on it right now because it's the end of the day, I will mark mm -hmm. it with a star to do it as a first thing tomorrow morning to just, you know, catch up with the, with the, with the communication and with the common thread there and then react to it or just leave it be and just unstar it. Yeah. So what I try to do, what I've tried to do for a long time, but it, it, didn't always work for me, is to only check Nosby comments um, in the later part of, of the day, at the end of, of my work day. Uh, not necessarily mm -hmm. just once, but I really, really want as many, you know, as often as possible, a long, you know, four or five hour block of just uninterrupted deep work. And with Slack, it, it's a bit different. Slack is more distracting but it's also more, you know, more about what's happening right now. So I, I will often, yeah, yeah. It's so more pushy. not before the the. So my idea lately is that I usually start work at eight thirty or so. As I've been uh, starting work earlier than than before, and until ten a.m. when where we mm -hmm. have the the ten a.m. meeting, then I will, you know, I'm like completely isolated. I'm just like already pre-decided pre on my first task of the day, which we've discussed b before, like another related idea. We'll link to it in the show notes. And like, there, there's nothing. I checked nothing until 10 a.m. because I already have my plan for the first, you know, hour and a half of the day. Then after the, yeah. Uh, nice. Then around Scrum, I will check out Slack uh, just to see if there's no new mentions. Like if there's nothing directly relevant to me. And I will usually check every... Um, every hour or, or so, I, I will just look at Slack to see if there isn't anyone mentioning me directly. But the idea is that I don't look at 
not be in your comments because they can also be distracting once you look at a, a thread and you know that you want to reply, but you start thinking about it. And it's just like the whole idea yeah. of of um, communicating like that in Nosby is that it's asynchronous. So it's unlikely that, um, you know, something is urgent there and it doesn't also appear on Slack and with someone, you know, mentioning you to, uh, you know, to give them feedback because they really have to close this or something like that, right? But it's just, you know, when when there's this, um, when when the the badge next to new comments changes from zero to something, it's just so tempting to look at it, you know, and and so mm-hmm. uh, that's why this this um, this this policy, like this this small stupid change, is that I never zero it out, um, is helpful um, because there's no trigger because there's no trigger, right? Because it the badge is always mm-hmm. there. And if it's there, like it, it just I don't react to it nearly as much, nearly as often, because it's always there. And whether it has five items or one hundred, it doesn't matter. It's always there. And I, I will check it out at the end of the day, maybe a, a few times, but after I'm done with my my deep work, my most important work for the day, and then you know I will check out most of it but for example we have uh, i have i'm part of two projects where i'm rarely needed but i need to be part of them so i get a lot of new comments in marketing and in sub and in uh, support right so i will only check out Mm -hmm. the tasks if they seem relevant to me or they're delegated to me or someone mentioned me in them but i would before just instinctively after i do that i'll just check the whole project you know mark it as red and now I don't, uh, simply because, like, you know, I will do it from time to time so that I don't get a, a huge list. But, like, the point is that I don't leave mm-hmm. this, um, I don't want to zero out the, the whole view. And most of the other projects, I will, like, check out much of it and zero it out. But I just, I want to keep the badge, the counter there so that I don't have the, the trigger. Yeah, I mean, this is what happens in Slack. So when a cha- channel has unread uh, messages, it Mm-hmm. turns bold like the, it turns bold so you're right i mean now i have a few channels here that are bold when i look at them and for me there is no urge to check them out right now i mean and and, and i i have no clue if they have one you know new message or 10 or 100 or 1000 you know they're there and if i feel like checking this channel out i mean going through the the comments there i'm, I'm just gonna go there but because it's bold anyway like there is no additional trigger to 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 go there. Yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I can get that. Discussing yeah. things like that sometimes seems silly because, like, <laughs> like if if you don't want to check it out, just don't check it out. But you know, you and I know that it, we are humans. Yeah, we don't work. Humans like that. don't work like that. You know. If if you check out a thing every time there is a badge every time it says hey there's stuff unread then you condition yourself and you know you will do it hundreds or thousands of of times you know over a span of a year using slack you will probably have this reaction you know every day three, three times or um you know four times over 250 work days of the year or whatever it is, that a thousand times you strengthen this connection in your brain that there's something and you react and you condition yourself to it so strongly that it's it's hard to to break. And so my idea, and it's not perfect and I, I, I still sometimes fail at it, but I think it's helpful. I think I'm doing uh, definitely better than before is that by always keeping some stuff, I partially uncondition myself from it because there are times where there's new stuff and I check it because I said, okay, that's now it's time to check it. And there's other times where there's stuff unread and I know, okay, there's always stuff unread and I don't check it. And so, you know, my my brain sort of doesn't create this cue routine cycle. Yeah, now that, now that I think about it, maybe maybe in Nosby we should introduce like a, a, a setting that instead of uh, count like putting the counter, for example, for a new comment, there should be just a badge that there are new comments and that's it. This way, the increasing counter wouldn't like wouldn't tempt you to check them because you know the, the number is getting bigger and bigger. 
Uh, well, I, I was going to suggest a similar idea to you, uh, which is that, uh, okay, so that's your idea is idea number one. Idea number two is we always show the badge. Even if there's nothing, the badge just says zero, right? But you don't always read the uh, badge okay. until you're looking at it, but it's always there. So th there isn't as much like visual difference that like just immediately triggers you to, to check it out. The mm -hmm. third option is that um, maybe maybe uh, we should give an option to just disable the badge altogether. Now that's sort of risky because um, you know uh, someone might turn it on even though they're not sort of already power users that know that they need to check it at least sometimes. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I think. Uh, you know, while un unconventional, it it might be better f just for our psychology to always show the badge even with z with zero, just to like reduce the the difference. Hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Just to yeah to give you an idea that that you know things are coming over yeah. there, right? Yeah. Because because you know getting rid of the badge altogether and no indication yeah, that there risky. are new comments, like it's risky, and especially for somebody who, as you said, who who might not understand what they're doing by disabling or mm -hmm. enabling this option. So um. So yeah, this would be just too much, you know. It's for hardcore users and a sm small usage base. So I don't think you know we should do that. But yeah, that's a, that's a, that's, a, that's an idea with with the badge. Yeah, it's like literally a, a one line change uh, and unconventional. But I, I I would I would be for it, and you know we can always change it back if it turns out that people are confused with it. But I I I think it it should work. Now th there's another mm -hmm. r related problem which. I hope to. I, I think I, I convinced uh, Rafael that that we should change it. Uh, but I, th I think that's missing for me in Nosby is that we don't mark like in the new comments section. Uh, we don't put at the top or otherwise mark tasks which have new mentions, like m that mention us. Yeah, we are we are going to fix that right now in the new in the newest version. Of course, working on it. Yeah, I I I think that that is the plan. I I hope that we actually uh, get this done for three point seven, because, um, mm -hmm. it would be good because it it adds an additional level of um, distinction between things more and less urgent. Like if someone is mentioning you, then it might not yeah. be urgent in the sense that you have to react right now but it's definitely more important right you you might you might have a yeah, task exactly. which is in a pro, you know a task you wouldn't normally check out that you would mark as red because it's some project you don't care about and you're you're not delegated to this task but someone mentions you and so we send notifications for that but what if you don't check the notification then it's gone or what what if you don't want yeah. to have notifications for that yeah, but you just you just want to see it when you enter. Yeah, when so you open so them. this is this is mm -hmm. my idea. This is what what I want to do, but I can't right now. Is I, I want to actually disable notifications for mentions altogether because I I figure that like just seeing about how we work at Nosby, um, things that are urgent happen on Slack. Like someone mentions me on Slack, when someone mentions me on Nosby, it's because something is important for me, but it's. I don't have to react to it right now. But the problem is that I, if I don't have the notification, I won't see the task at all, and, and that's bad, right? So by putting it at the top, it would be easier to like process new comments, like check it even more than, you know, um, like a couple of times a day to see if there's not, no one mentioning me, but like ignore other new comments until the end of the day. Yeah, especially for me, uh, since I'm the boss, people mention me quite a few times. But then these comments just, you know, disappear in the pile of all, all the, all the yeah. other comments and all the other tasks. Uh, that's why for me this option would be really, really <laughs> crucial. But yeah, as, uh, as far as I know, I mean, we, I, we just talked to Rafa, our VP of product, and he he said that he, you know this is this is totally a go for three point seven. So he's he should be showing us the the you know the concept of this uh, soon. Right. Very good. Very good. So speaking of the notifications, for example, um, uh, unlike you, I still carry my Apple Watch, mm -hmm. and um, and over there, what I realized is that now. Whenever I get a notification that is not welcome on the watch, I, I have this trigger that I just open the iPhone and go to watch app and remove notifications from this particular you know service or go to 
settings and just remove notifications from the service completely mm -hmm. because I don't want to be notified at all. Uh, because what I realize is that especially on the watch, when I, uh, I have this thing that I put my phone away in the afternoon and I just walk around the house with the watch, I want to be notified only of the important things, of important messages and not you know, anything happening that, 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 you know, that, hits, that hits my, uh, my phone. So, so again, this is also a way of curating things. But, um, but actually having these important notifications on my watch enables me to be calm because I can leave my phone behind. You know, because we uh, like this is like the contrary concept that having notifications on the watch, like having you know cur curated notifications on the watch, helps me keep my phone away and and uh, and not be tempted to be, be with my kids and be on my phone. You know, I was just laughing uh, because it's funny how over the lifespan of this podcast, you're becoming more like me and I'm becoming more like you. <laughs> like you, you, you were saying about how you have this this uh, almost violent reaction to notifications that shouldn't be there. And I'm like, yeah, I had that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely hang out too much. <laughs> but uh, which episode is this? 126. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're with somebody for 126 straight hours, then, you know, at some point... <laughs> Well, not straight, but you know, straight yeah. in a, you know every week. And, oh well, and, yeah.